inelegant and tedious. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is the Ani Nintendo game. In a year full of triumphs for the spunky Switch, this massive role-playing game is a disappointment. I didn't love the first Xenoblade Chronicles. A 2010 Wii game from veteran director Tetsuya Takahashi and his team at Monolith Soft. I hated the boring do-gooder shulk in his dull screeching about the power of the Minato. And the world's impressive scale didn't make up for its rote combat system. I skipped 2015's Xenoblade Chronicles X but have been looking forward to Xenoblade 2 for a while. In hopes that the man behind Xenogears one of my favorite games of all time, might have returned to form. It brings me no joy to report that he has not. Xenoblade 2 is set within a world called Ulrist, where humans reside on top of monstrous creatures called titans who float atop an infinite sea of clouds. These titans won't hold up forever, though, and there's a lingering sense that once they fall, humanity is doomed. Our hero, Rex, is a blandly nice salvager whose job is to dive into the clouds and scour for loot, which he exchanges for cash and then sends back home to his village, because he's just that nice. One day, Rex accepts a mysterious mission and finds himself irreversibly linked to Pyra, a voluptuous woman who is also a sword. She's what's called a blade, which in Xenoblade parlance means she is a weapon that can be controlled by Rex who is now called a driver. Pyra wants Rex to help her find Elysium, a rumored paradise that could help save mankind by giving them some place to live after all the titans collapse. Rex is into it, because again, he's just that nice. As the game goes on, cracks start to show. Xenoblade 2 will barrage you with combat tutorials full of proper nouns, telling you how to perform driver combos elemental combos, and fusion combos, among many of the game's other confusingly named mechanics. Most of the tutorials are explained poorly, and if you don't immediately grasp what they're trying to tell you, you're screwed, because there's no way to revisit them. Learning how the battle system actually works requires lots of experimentation or, more likely, a good online YouTube tutorial. You have to select the right attacks at the right time in the right order. And if you get them correct, you can do a lot of extra damage to enemies. It's chaotic and messy, sometimes satisfying, but often repetitive, because every battle takes way too long. Xenoblade 2 caps off a killer first year for the Nintendo Switch. Yet I found it in many ways to be an anti-Nintendo game. It'd of course be unfair to directly compare Xenoblade 2 to the likes of Super Mario Odyssey. But there's an interesting contrast to be made between Monolith's RPG and Nintendo's other big games. Mario, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, and even Splatoon 2 are masterful at presenting the player with a deck of mechanics and escalating over time, teaching you how to play not with trial and error but with precision. Super Mario Odyssey takes a few verbs, jumping, possessing, and ekes out as many challenges as possible, from each one. Breath of the Wild, a game on which Monolith's 